I mean, we we were the beginning of of, of the new decade, right? Um, so the the fun of the eighties has started to ebb away, and so the the nineties were the decades of cuts, and you know we saw Bob Ray disappear and Mike Harris come into into being was the, sort of the nineties and the the era of of care with architecture had departed and, and we had entered the era of barn-like buildings and the world sort of started to revert back to lowest common denominator realities and Trent was the kind of place where you still could dream. It was still the kind of place where people cared, you know, and, um, and very audacious really because it was small but um, but dared to think very big ideas. And people were very willing to indulge those ideas at Trent. Um, it, it, it didn't just reside in hallways and residence and at the student pub, it, 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 it permeated everything, you know. Um, the, the faculty in particular were, were very willing to indulge large ideas that um, that challenged major movements at the time. So, you know, Trent, I remember going to throw eggs at Lloyd Axworthy, for example, because he was then Minister of Education, and, and I mean, education changed. Trent held on to what most people would consider a, a very poor business model um, because it, it offers a full spectrum liberal arts and science education in a small class setting in a, a very difficult campus because the campus is away from town, it's away from housing and un, sort of ancillary enablements. Um, but it's managed to do it and maintain a value proposition which which is only now becoming on vogue, right? Um, triple bottom line type stuff where public good and nation building and, and radical thought is, is still very much treasured.